want to sound like this, oh God. Lord, we thank you, oh God. Many people have chosen to be in a prayer panel. So many have chosen to be in one place or the other. So have even chosen to come to my as well. But we have chosen to be in your presence. Father, because in your presence and fullness of joy, Lord, we thank you. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the world high shall abide under the shadow of God Almighty. He said, He will prepare a table before you in the presence of the enemy. He said, and He said, He swore that look unto Him is the author and the finisher of your faith. He said, I have chosen you. Even while you were yet sinner, I loved you. I chose you as a vessel in my heart. Why go to choose to praise God? Worship Him. It is beauty of the holiness. Father, we thank you, O oh God. We give you all the glory. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we happy? Yes, Lord. If you are happy, let's give them a round of applause. and two things that will have to eat. Well, on the days, Monday, Friday and Saturday, evangelism takes place. We all assemble here in the DBM for our different places. Well, on Monday and Friday, we assemble here at 1 o'clock and we get to our destination where we preach by 2 o'clock. Then on Saturday, 11 o'clock, we all assemble here. Please let us endeavor to be here and participate in the evangelism because that's the essence of it. We have to spread the word. On Tuesday, that's Bible study, 5 p.m. for those of us who are eager to know about the word of God. And for those of us who are not that eager also, you are also welcome so as to know the word of God. Then on Saturday, morning glory, 5 o'clock, there is a powerful prayer going on for everybody, on behalf of everybody, and we wish everybody to participate so as to take the glory of God, to let the glory of God shine on us. Also on Saturday, we have choir rehearsal, that's at 3 o'clock. So you can see what they've really given us. So they come here Saturday, 3 o'clock, to rehearse what they have teached for us. Then on Sunday, 12 o'clock for Bible study. So for us to have um, what we, um, that we preached to us so that we have a kind of discussion to know, to get an insight of what is going to be preached to us on Sunday. So 12 o'clock here on Sunday we have Bible study. Then at 1 o'clock the main service starts. Please let us endeavor to be here on time. Then in addendum there are two things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. On the 15th of this month, something good is happening here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to applaud. I don't want you to guess. Our powerful, <coughs> dynamic apostle, that is the day. Wow. Very big thing for him. So let us prepare women and women. So let us try and organize a befitting birthday for him. So, so as we do that, God will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Then at the end of the service, women are requested to wait uh, after the service. Please, if you know that you are a woman or you are women, please wait behind and meet for the service. So may the Lord. God bless his soul eh, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Well, at this point in time, <coughs> may I request the pleasure of our dynamic, ever powerful apostle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, encouraging, encouraging. I tell you, it's not easy standing here. When, when, when your time comes, 
you will, you will feel that God standing here, you are talking, it's not easy. Yes, sir. Hey. <laughs> you can clap one more time for the power. Hey, I mean, you guys are anointed. I don't know which kind of a bar or which kind of food you ate uh, on Saturday and then Sunday, but something has happened. And prophetically, you spoke. And I pray that the church will take it seriously because Amen. what you said, the praise that was going on in the worship, it was losing people. Amen. Things were coming out of people's life. I'm telling you, Amen. Yeah, your amen is weak. Your, your, some of that, some of you, your amen wants to wear, carry the chains and come and put it on again. God is losing you through praises and worship. Stand on your feet and scream and shout. Yes. Now, in that same notes, let's lift up one prayer. That let me go. Let me go. I hear that. I say, let me go. Anything that is holding you, you are commanding it to let you go. If it is darkness, you are commanding it to let you go. Any spirit that is holding you, tell him, let me. Let me. Let me. Lift up your voice in prayer right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I lose my people. That anything that is holding them, whatsoever is holding them down, I pray that they may be loose, they may be set free, they may be exhausted, they may be elevated. We break the chains, we break every iron box, we come against every demonic walls, evil mouths that are open against you. We command it to be shut, we release the soul of the Lord, we take the atmosphere, we change the atmosphere. We change the order. We change it now. The Lord, let thy glory come. Let thy glory come. Anything that is holding your marriage, I command it. Let my people go. Any spirit that is holding your destiny, let my people be free. I command the many arrows that are being shot from your background. I break them. I break them. Every demonic fear. I break them. I break them. I command them. Demonic eyes that are money to your advancement. I command those eyes to be shut down. And I pray, let there be a lifting up. Let there be a lifting up for your head, your soul, your body, your mind, your heart. May God bring forth an opening for your life, your finances, your issues, your immigration issues. I pray right now, right now, let there be a new coverage. Let there be a new coverage. Somebody, your prayer is going. Your prayer is getting there. Your prayer is getting it. Your prayer is getting there. Your prayer is lifting up walls. Your prayer is lifting up evil forces. Curses are being broken. Arrows are being destroyed. Mouth is being quenched. And the verse was like, Only you can make me happy. Mm -hmm. Only you can make me strong. Mm -hmm. Only you can make me happy. Oh, oh. Only you can make me strong. Then he goes to the verse and says, All right. Oh, only you can make me happy. You make me happy. Only you can make me strong. Oh, Jesus. Only you can make me happy. Oh, Jesus. Only you can make me strong. Take me to the chorus. Let me go like this. Oh, you can make me happy. 
it's quite terrible to avoid the last test yeah. because coming to test is not easy. It's not the fight, that they're bad for yourself, that you're bad for yourself. Ask yourself, you fight every day before coming to test. It is not easy to be there. Ah, what are they? Blah, blah, blah. My God, the Lord is with you. May you have your seat in the bread of the Lord. You know, church is sweet too. Yes, when the atmosphere is like this, you have a good worship team. Their spirit is clean. Yes. Uh, it, 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 it is their spirit also. They work on themselves to be able to deliver. Amen. When they come and they prepare the place like that, and I mean, you are enjoying this presence. That man of God who wake up in the morning will have to pray and pray so that the atmosphere. The man of God was in my office and said, okay, I've heard that you have the presence of God. So what is your secret? I said, it's the secret time I spend with God. That is what creates the atmosphere. Amen. And they look at me and say, yes, how many hours? I say, until you tell me to go, I don't go. I stay there. My knees are tired. My back is tired. But I say, continue to worship. Continue to sing. Whilst you hear people sleeping and snoring. But because you are chosen, you got to stand up. Amen. You cannot compare yourself to the people sleeping. Amen. You have to stand up. Father, I thank you. Thank you I bless all of you that are here today. Amen. And I pray that may his hand rest upon you. Amen. We are going to continue our studies of the day. John chapter 14. For the sake of those who were not here on Tuesday, I'll start from verse 1 and I'll just fast. I'll not go deep like we did on Tuesday. Tuesday was awesome. And I pray that you will start making time to even come on Tuesday because his presence was here and his power was here. So I pray that you will make it. John chapter 1, uh, John chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Today, God is dealing with any trouble in your heart. Amen. Any trouble you carried from your house before you got to these green gates, that trouble has expired. Amen. Now, it is up to you whether you're going to carry the trouble in your mind. Because Jesus said that by thinking of it, you can't do anything. It's better you lay it at the altar. Lay that trouble at the altar today and walk out like a free person. Amen. And the way you think, Jesus said that, that will you be. Amen. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he becomes, or so shall you be. So if you believe, you lay this struggle at this altar, don't leave these premises and go and pick it up again. How do you pick it up? You pick it up by starting to worry about it again. Starting to complain about it again. Why me God? Why? 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 Why God? Why? Then you have picked up your trouble that you left at the feet of Jesus Christ. May you throw the trouble. Where you are, throw that trouble to this place. I want to see somebody throw the trouble. Let it land here. Amen. Amen. Ah, throw it. Ah, ah. Oh yeah, throw. Some of you have more than one trouble. So throw. Yes. yes. Throw, throw. Yes, throw. Throw as many as you can. Throw it. Let it land here. And Natasha, how many have you thrown? Three. Okay. I didn't see it. Throw them all here. Throw them all. And don't throw it to the side where you are sitting because if you come back, throw it to the place here, yeah, right there. He's saying, do not let your hearts, the hearts, I told them on Tuesday that their heart pumps everything that you have in it. If you have worry in your heart, your leg will be worried. Your head will be worried. Your fingertips will be worried. Your back will be worried. Everything about you will be worried. Because what goes in their heart it distributes it to every part. Daniel is not so. He works with these kind of things. Yes. So when you go to his clinic, he will show you, he will check your heart before he will locate where the pain is. So what is your heart sending? If there is trouble there, let it go. As you've thrown it, may you not pick it up again. Amen. Verse 2. In my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus said that there's no way that I will lie to you. If my father is broke, I'll tell you God is broke. If he doesn't have mansions 
in his house. And I was telling them on Tuesday that now mansions are supposed to be bigger than house. But to God, it is a house. But to you, it's a mansion. And he said that even what they classify God's house in heaven is big. The man's mansion can be small within it. And it will not take any place at all. So God has places for you. And God is not broke. And I told them that what you have in heaven, you can command it on the earth. If your account is empty in heaven, you cannot receive anything here. So Jesus said that be rich towards God. That means do something that your heavenly account will be choked with something that you can command that thing to come into existence. Yes, yes. If you are broke in heaven, God, Jesus, when Jesus said it, is there anyone that is poor towards God? I was like, how can a man be poor towards God? And he said, a rich man, a certain rich man, had uh, his, 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 his farm and his farm grew and he started getting a lot of money, a lot of crops and he was wondering, how can I save more of these crops uh, that I, I, can, I can now say to my soul my soul, you have enough money now at the bank, so now make parties and you don't have to worry about anything anymore and that same day, God appeared to that man and said, you are a fool tonight I will take your life and who is going to manage your money are you getting me? And then the next statement is Jesus said, this is the people who are poor towards God. When you get all this plenty money, you should have thought about his kingdom. Because far back then you were in the church praying that God, if you bless me, I will bless your ministry. And God bless you. And he didn't think about God. Now you see, let me become selfish. Let me, let me, my storeroom is too small. Let me break it down and create a bigger storeroom so I can hoard more. Hoarding means selfishness. In the old days, God made sure that when your crops, when you are harvesting your crops, you should leave 10% on the field so that the beggars, the poor, and the birds in the air can come and eat on your farm. So not every fruit you see on the tree, just because it's glittering and it looks fresh, you are supposed to pick it and say, ah, this one is very nice. Some of it you have to intentionally and leave this one for the poor people. I leave this one for the birds. I leave this one for those who don't have. So that when I finish harvesting, they can also come and take over the rest. That is what God taught them. So don't be poor towards God. Say to somebody, don't be poor towards God. Don't be poor towards God. Pay your tithe. Keep your offerings. And be rich towards God. No, 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 don't worry. You know, if, even God knows whether we will pay tight or not. Because that is why somebody took his whole pay and gave it to the church. When we have, we are about to have our convention. I thought in my spirit, truly, we've never had so many men of God coming at one time like this. The previous times, you know, some women were here, they all contributed, they did very, very well. But God knew, He knew the future that some of us, our hearts, Right now, in some way, we don't know whether we should pay or we shouldn't pay. So God touched one person. He said, this is your full pay. You will not touch it. I didn't call for the person. I didn't do anything. The person said, woke up and brought and put that whole money in your account. And that's how we had a successful, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Concession. Yeah, anniversary. Because we cannot celebrate our anniversary broke and worried and tired. And on top of it, one person, one person decided to pay the hotel for the men of God. One person. He said, Apostle, you don't have to pay me back the money. I take it. I said, what? So this God will, he pays off. Following God, it will pay off. You will not be broke. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah, you will not be broke. Amen. You know, let me surprise you. I pray that the most stingiest people, they will be the one to bless you first. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the people that you thought they are very stingy, they will be the same people that God will use the first time to blow your mind. Hey! This man is giving me this money. Are you sure I don't want to collect it back tomorrow? No, no, no. I give it to you because there's a hand holding me. I have to release it. I tell you, may those people come your way Amen. to bless you. He said that I go to prepare a place for you. Right now, according to your works here, it is preparing places for you in heaven. Amen. <laughs> 
My mother told me that. She said, son, you see me, how I take people into this house. Every stranger, I bless them. I give them a place to stay. So wherever you will go, people will help you. Amen. And I tell you, everywhere I go, Amsterdam, Spain, everywhere, America, London, name it. Somebody will come and just say, sir, where are you going? Where will you sleep? I don't have anywhere. Come on. Oh. My mother's work paid off. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, no, you didn't get it. My mother's work paid off. Hallelujah. You are doing some work for yourself. Something that you have done that is as filled your account in heaven is about to pay you. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Don't be poor for what's God. That means don't be poor when it comes to the things of God. Invest time. Some of us, we don't have the money, but we have time. Make time. Be in his presence. Worship him. Pray and fill your prayer room in heaven. That whenever God passes your corridor and see your prayers pile up, he say, I need to visit this guy. He's still praying. You didn't get that one. I thought that's why you were going to say amen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not here, I'm not here, I'm not here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There are corridors and there are banks of prayer. Yeah? That is why, if I take you to the Old Testament, they, they are banks because they told Daniel, say, Daniel, from the first day you pray, God heard it. How, did, how would that be if there was not an account recorded that Daniel prayed? Not today, but he prayed 21 days ago. It was being stored. Oh man, this boy is here. Oh, you're not like here with me. Let me just preach and go. No, no, no. Mm. Verse 3. I go and I prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you unto myself. Unto myself is my problem. Unto myself, that means that Jesus has a place where he wants you to be. Amen. Amen. Not just making it to heaven. No, 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 no. That's not our case. There are other people. There are other people that might make it to heaven. They just be in heaven. They can be a corridor um, a master sweeper. They can be some people who be gardening, watering, gardening, working some works in heaven. But where we are going, uh -uh, where we disciples, we are going, we are going unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, because he said, I'm going to receive you unto myself. Hallelujah. That means when you get to heaven, not Abraham is going to say, welcome, my son, come here. Jesus will say, no, ask for this one. I want to be the one to welcome this one. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Ask for this one. From the time he went to Sweden, the way he lay back, I want to be the one to say welcome. My faithful servant. I want to be the one to embrace him. I want to be the one to hug him. Amen. See all that he has gone through. I will receive this one unto myself. He said, when I'm done with your building, I will receive you. I will receive you unto myself. Amen. Thank God. May he receive you now. Amen. Amen. A place. There's a place for you. Amen. You are not going to struggle to take somebody's place. But there is a place with your name on it. Amen. That is why when they came to Jesus Christ, the woman, the mother of John and James brought in her sons. To Jesus. He said, Jesus, I have come to plead that you make this my sons. One should sit on your right and one should sit on your left. And Jesus said, that, you know what? This thing cannot be, cannot be decided by me. It will be decided by man's work. Get it? It will be decided by your works. And Jesus turned and said, you don't know what you are asking, woman. You know, this thing you are asking, you don't know what you are asking. Are you guys going to be able to suffer like the way I'm going to suffer? You didn't get that one? Yes, oh, let me repeat it. He asked them, will you be able to suffer for the kingdom of God like the way I'm about to suffer? The guys just said, oh yeah, we will suffer. No problem. You say, yeah? You will suffer. Okay, right, let me tell you the future. Indeed, you are going to suffer. I've checked the future. I've seen your future. Yeah, you will suffer. But yes, still, there will be other people. They will grow up in the church called Russian Chapel, Sweden. They will be stronger. Amen. They will fight longer. Amen. And they have been reserved to sit at my right hand and my left side. So guys, you make it to heaven. Amen. But that seat is preserved by my father based on their works. Hallelujah. Mm. Based on the work that you would do for him. What are you doing for him? What are you doing for him? Not for yourself. 
It's easy to talk about self. It's easy to talk about what we want and what we desire. But what are we doing for Him? He's talking about that today. What about we are shy to even mention His name? Because the name Jesus is not so cool. It's easy for all of us to go about and say, Oh, I know Zlatan, I know Zlatan. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I knew Zlatan before he became Zlatan. It's easy to brag about Zlatan than to talk about Jesus Christ. Oh, you didn't get it. Yes, it's easy to talk about famous people because that makes you become somebody. I remember when Peter E.J. came to Somalia and I was hanging out with Peter E.J. I mean, wherever we went, I could get things cheap. People were printing flyers for me almost free because I knew Peter E.J. Footballer from Nigeria. I did music with him. It's easy. But it's time for me to talk about Jesus Christ. And then I have to change the gears. You're about to talk about this Jesus. You will not get things free. You will get insults. People will look down on you. People will say that you are mad. You are not fresh. You are not young. You have lost your mind. Can I still talk about him? <laughs> that is where you decide your position in heaven. Yes. And you decide your children's future. Yes, sir. It's the truth. Yes, sir. One time I got tired, I said, God, you know what? I'm tired of life. And God just asked me. I thought he was going to ask me something else. He said, don't you want to see your children grow and see them marry? I said, God, tell me something else. Are yeah, you telling me my behavior and my service now determine my, future, my, my children's future? Yes, sir. I said, wow. Then this thing is not about me. Yes, sir. It's about a whole generation that I don't even know about. Yes, sir. It's not more about me again. Because the hand that can do evil, when he sees your child, the evil spirit decides. Yes. Yes. And when you are, you are laboring for him, he will say, evil, you cannot decide concerning this child. Because this child's father is so occupied with my things. Hallelujah. There is no space Hallelujah. for him to mourn. Clap yes. over them. <laughs> that is where God will place you under his covering. Sickness will be thrown around in the air. Amen. But yet still, he will say that no, not this one. Who is going to minister on Monday? Who is going to go for evangelism on Monday? If he is, you get sick. That's why sickness don't cross your path. Hallelujah. That's why sickness don't cross my path. Hallelujah. I went to the clinic. I told him, "Can I get something because I don't get sick? Can I get something in in, in a reward if you people are taking my tax and things like that because?" You know, healthcare is covered. I said, neither will my children get sick, nor me get sick. So if we can get the refund, they say, no, no, it doesn't. Whether you get sick or you don't get sick, you pay. <laughs> because you see, when you come under that coverage, yes. you are protected. Hallelujah. You are secure. Yes. You are healthy. Yes. Every time, the only time sickness will come is when you decided in your mind that I'm changing gears and I'm going to reverse. Then you will collect sickness. Yes. You will collect problems. You will have issues. But when you stand on that ground and say, God, you are my everything. And I don't have time for this stuff. Take this thing out of me. It's gone. When things like this happen, you don't even need time to pray. If you start feeling some fever, I say, hey, where are you coming from? Don't you know I'm busy for the kingdom? Come on. Just drink some cold water before you realize you are moving. You are going ahead. Amen. And he says here that where I am, there ye may be also. Where I am, that same place you will be. That means where I am, my city called the city of Jesus Christ, that is where you are going to be. Yeah. Oh, remember, and I told them on Tuesday, there's going to be a city called the Apostle Kobe Washington City. Amen. Amen. Within Jesus' city. Hallelujah. There's going to be areas, branches. Oh, when you get to Apostle Kobe Washington Street, then turn. And when you turn left, then you will come to Minister Francis Street. And then when you turn right, then you will come to Ima Street. And then you will meet Monday. Monday Street will go far there. Hallelujah. Everybody here, you have a street. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There will be a street with your name on it. Hallelujah. 
That's the same way that when somebody do something good, they name it straight after you so that you will not be forgotten. Yes. May you never be forgotten. Amen. Your street is already being built. Amen. And once your street is there, anytime God will take a stroll, he say, hey, this Washington street feels very good. I can't wait for that guy to come up here with his family and his children and so that he can start making noise around in heaven because we need them. Oh, don't you know God takes, God, God is the chief architect. He goes and checks your building. Hey, this building you are building, is it big enough for this man? He has big dreams. And this is a man that will come to heaven and will still be dreaming. <laughs> oh, you don't, you don't get it. You know, some of us, we, we are just trying to crawl, crawl ourselves into heaven. It's because of the way we handle the things of God. But if you are handling it with all your heart, very passion, every fiber of your body, anything that is within you is for God, you will know that your expectation is massive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the reason why our expectation about the things of God is so small is because we are not doing all. There's more we can do. Tell somebody you can do more. You can do more. Oh, you can do more for Jesus. You can do more for Jesus. That's what. And where I go, you know. And the way, you know. That, that was the problem of the disciples. And then it says in the verse 5, let me add it. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not where thou goest. And how can we know the way? They just said, we don't know. The guy said, we don't know. But Jesus is expecting them to know. See, nobody works this hard and go to hell. If you work this hard, you go to heaven. And why are you telling me that you don't know where I'm going? That was what he was saying. You know the place I'm going. You know where God is. God is. God is. And you know that that's the only place I'll go. So I pray that may you know. May you know the way. Amen. May you know the way. Amen. May God lead you. Amen. May the Lord guide you Amen. to the place. Amen. That may you have an, an expectation. May God open your mind to know the way. Amen. Let me quickly give you a verse that I got when I came here today. John chapter 17 verse 9. Let me show you something. Can you roll down the curtains? The sun might be scorching some ices. Yes. See here, I want you to be mindful that Jesus is focusing on disciples. Jesus is focusing on his disciples. Because you know, by now we are not so interested in church. Church doesn't move me anymore. What moves me is discipleship. The prophet came to my office and told me, he said, I was, the reason why I came, I didn't come for your church, but I came to tell you what God has said that I should tell you. That focus on discipleship. Church folks will come, suck, and will not work. They will not labor. That is just ordinary church folks. But those that will be laboring, they have an assignment in the house of God. They do something. They are disciples. They support the church. Whether it sounds good or not, when the apostles take decisions, they back it up with everything they have. You see, when we don't respect headship, you'll be the one challenging every decision. When your head say do this, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. when the head say do that, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. and you'll be surprised that you end up marrying a woman. That will play your whole character for you. Why is the woman we are doing this? What is this coming for? I remember this thing. I used to do that to my head. That's, that's what you get. And then your children grow. They do the same thing. The, the, the spirit is following. You can marry an angel, but just because it is you, the spirit will move upon her and say, the way you treated that your man of God, or the way you treated that same spirit is around. It follows you. Uh, I didn't ask, I didn't give anybody permission to go and find the wife or find the husband. But hear what Jesus is saying. I pray for them. He's talking about disciples. His disciples. I pray for my disciples. I pray not for the world. Can you imagine? Jesus, the Savior of the world. He said, Father, after being in this earth, the world is a different issue for me. 
I pray for my disciples. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine. Eh? I pray that you become a disciple. Mm -hmm. Disciples wake up thinking about God. What can I do for you today? Jesus, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? Every second, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? That is who a disciple is. A Christian. God, what can you do for me? What can you do for me? You know the problems I'm going to What can you do for me? What can you do for me? And then you get tired along the way. And then you start fixing your own self. You start fixing your own problem. You don't want to do anything for God. So I pray not for the world. The world has no nothing to do with me. But I pray for my disciples. Let me show you another verse. Luke chapter 10 verse 21. I want to, you know, rewire your brains. Yeah. Because this church, church attitude, it has to die. A man of God was telling me, he was in my office uh, this week, the last week, sorry. He said, you know, there used to be like a thousand members. Yeah. A thousand members. Imam Wahim. Hey, man. White church. There used to be like a thousand. Eight hundred to thousand members. Oh, any place packed. They were happy. He said he was happy as a young pastor. But as he matured, he began to realize that it was not healthy. Everybody came just testing the atmosphere and nothing, nothing. They were not being built as disciples. And along the time, when I started now training the people, it was no more interesting. So they started falling off. They say right now they are half of that number. But he said, now he believes he has a church. That's what he said. He said, now I know I have a church because everybody now knows me. They know my weakness and they know my strength and they don't use it to condemn me, but they encourage me, they, they honest me. That's what the man of God was saying. I said, whoa. So the thousand, five hundred made noise. When the real test came, they ran away. <laughs> That's why they tell me to the apostle, I love you. I love you. Oh, this church is the best church. I will see it as the time goes on. I will see whether anybody really loves this church. Once she start coming in, once she start coming, you know, they will see it as the time goes on. Yes, yes. Now he says that in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. Now, okay. So when you hear text like this, you think something powerful is going to happen. Is it also? The same hour, Jesus is not happy, happy, rejoicing. Oh, Father, thank you, Father, thank you. And he said, I thank thee, O oh, Father, Lord of heaven and the earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemeth good in thy sight. What is he talking about? He said there are things about yieldingness, handing yourself over unto discipleship. This idea and this submission has been taken away from these people. And they, those people, they call themselves wise and prudent. They are the ones that we say, evangelism on Monday, <laughs> evangelism on Friday, <laughs> they are wise. And put it. It is the greatest commission. He says that go into the world and make disciples. Saturday evangelism. We spend so many hours on WhatsApp, Facebook, sending now all of us has become text message preachers. When God is saying, meet a human being that you don't even have on your phone. And tell them Jesus loves you. You can't do that. Then you will send me a text. God bless you. I know God has blessed. It's not a new thing. Make time for evangelism. Let's go and meet some people who are possessed, oppressed, suppressed, and about to go home and to commit suicide. 
Go there and tell them Jesus loves you. Give them a bread. Give them coffee. Give them some. Show them love. This one, we can do. It becomes a struggle. When we are not even busy, we make ourselves busy. Hey, wake up. Tell this prayer that is putting you to sleep. Hey, give me. This is the thing I need to do. I need to wake up and to do something for God. Jesus said, on the last day, when he came, this is what he said. He said, you people are the faithful one. Amen. Coming to my father's rest. And then he said, how can you call us faithful? He said, when I was poor, you gave me food to eat. When I was naked, you met me at Vanden, Melbourne, so the van, and you gave me a shirt to wear. And then when I was locked down in prison, you came and you visited me and you encouraged me not to even commit suicide in the prison. Amen. And the people said, ah, uh, excuse me, sir. When did we see you? He said, no, 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 you didn't see me. But unto everyone you did it to, at Van Hem, at Melvong, and you were doing it unto me. Amen. Because you don't know those people. Yeah. Oh, don't clap. Don't clap. Because it's painful. The truth hurts. He said, anyone you will give tea to, you will give bread to, you have done it all to him. So you can go, that is where you can go and say, Jesus, you know, today I gave, I gave you ten times, I gave you ten times coffee and bread and clothes. And I prayed for you. And Jesus said, yes, I know you did it for me. I am happy you did it. Evangelism. When the church got it, after the book of Acts, and the church had grown 3,000, and God saw that. There are now 3,000 people gathering, and all of them are saying the same thing. We love you, we love you, Jesus, we love you. They were getting tired. That is why God has to raise a, a sword that can come and scatter the church. So the church will be planted all over. Even though there will be only one church. So when Paul was now coming and bringing half up to the churches, this one, Rani and Philip took this direction, uh, James took that direction. The church scattered, not scattering to be weak, but scattering to start other churches. So the growth is good, but the apostle must understand that we need now to lay branches. There should be a place that we can call, oh, this corner is for, is for Monday. I should be able to put everybody on the roasting God over Monday. I say, Monday, your people, are you taking care of the roasting God? And Monday will say, yes, they are under control. I am controlling them with my prayers and I'm controlling them with my tea and my coffee and my bread. Ah, you don't see that. I should be able to say, Ima, everybody at Crooks Bay, I give them to you. If anything bad happens on the news at Crooks Bay, I will hold you responsible. Hey, that is how Christians are supposed to dominate. And we are not dominating. Because we are praying too much for ourselves. We are praying too much for our needs. The devil has made sure that your need is in front of you. So everything else that matters to God, it makes us push it to the side. Amen. I should be able to put the whole new dollar of Professor Scott under Igor's yeah, I say it was. How is the atmosphere? If she's telling me on the phone, I don't know. I'll tell her go and stand on the street and check the atmosphere. And then you have to check the atmosphere. It's filled. It's God in the atmosphere. Yes, God is in the atmosphere. Yeah, you can continue to do. He said you will have to have power. Not just power to get wealth, power to get this, power to. That's what we are all praying for. Power. Oh God, make me a millionaire. Make me a millionaire. No, 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 please. <laughs> you already, you already know that. If you are not spending millions at the hospital just to breathe, there are people who are paying a lot of money just to stay alive. And you are alive. Whether you have food to eat or not, you are alive. You are rich. In Jesus' name. Amen. Stand on your feet. Let, let's pray. May you not be wise in your own eyes. Aha. May you not think you are prudent, smarter than everybody else when it comes to the things of God.
Father, may you humble yourself and lay down your life and labor for him who is able and is faithful to reward you even now. Begin to pray and let's confess our sins. Tell God that God, I know I can do more. But having been faithful, talk to him. Talk to him. Tell him that, Lord, I know I can do more for you. But I've been so shy of you. And I know the word says that if I'm ashamed of you before people, I'll also be ashamed of you in front of the angels of God and in front of God. Lord, do not be ashamed of me. Do not be ashamed of me. Just because I deny you all the time. Do not be ashamed of me. I, I, I'm expecting you to be praying right now. Talk to God from your heart. And Lord, I, I'm pleading, I'm pleading, please, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me to do more for you. Most blessed, most glory is the ancient. I'm 